What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Electrician U. And today we're going to talk breakers. got a smorgasbord of breakers here. These are all square D. I uh, am a big fan of square D. Um, I think they make a stellar product and uh, you're going to come across a lot of brands of breakers and panels out there uh, over the years of doing this. Some of them are really shitty. Some of them are, you know, mediocre. Some of them are awesome and you never have any problems. GE and square D pretty much top of the line. Um, GE feels like a cheaper product, but it's actually a really, really good product. Um, Siemens makes some kind of middle of the road type of stuff. Uh, Cutler Hammer makes both. Um, but Square D is pretty much known in our trade as the top notch, best of the best. They just have like you know these breakers they feel like really really well made when they trip you know they've got like this little indicator I can't show you right now because I'd have to actually sit and trip one of these um, but there's a little uh, a little orange thing in here that trips or that, that like pops out and it shows you that the breaker is tripped so when you go to a panel you're not sitting there trying to look for a trip breaker because the handle didn't move it actually does move every single time very reliably uh, into the tripped position. So these are like easy, very, very easy to identify when a, tri a breaker's tripped. Um, you know, the, the handle feel. Anyways, I'm not here like trying to represent Square D. I'm just telling you Square D. The reason I have all Square D breakers is because Square D is the shit, and I like the shit. So, so you'll notice that uh, if you look at the front sides, let me get all of these in order. Sorry, I was not prepared. Um, you'll notice that every single one of these breakers is a different size. So this one's got three bolts on it. This is actually a three-pole breaker that you would use in a three-phase setting. Um, three hots actually go into the bottom of here. This is a two-pole, two screws, two hots. So this, you know, the average like 240-volt circuit is going to use this kind of breaker because it has two places for two hots. This is a single pole breaker, one hot. This is actually what we call a tandem 20. So this is just like a single pole breaker. It's the same size, it'll fit in the same exact slot in a panel. But instead of you having one handle, you can actually put two circuits and run two circuits off of one place on a panel. Now, you're still only using one phase, but it's no different than you having uh, two of these breakers on any given phase. It's just two uh, circuits that's able to be run from one device. Each one of these handles is rated at 20. So this whole device can handle two 20 amp circuits. Now you don't want to put a 220 load on this because again where this is connecting to the actual bus inside of the panel this is like the black phase or this is just the red phase. So if you were to hook up a, you know, like thinking that this is 220 and hook two wires up to it, you're not going to get 220. You're still just going to get 110 from each hot to ground. And you're going to get zero in between them because they're going to the same damn thing. There's no difference of potential there. So, um, let's talk a little bit about how breakers work. A breaker is a mechanically held device. The average breaker. So inside of this breaker is essentially a spring that holds this handle in the on position. It holds the, the breaker so that it will send current through it. All right, so now I'm going to take my tester and I'm going to put one lead on this screw where you would screw your wire in. And I'm going to take the other lead and on the front side of this handle, I'm going to touch. You can hear continuity. That lets you know it's in the on position. So when you turn this in the off position, it stops sending continuity. It disconnects. It's just like a regular switch. 
So I'm going to open one of these bad boys up and show everyone what's inside and kind of go a little bit deeper in how they work. Alright, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these bad boys apart so you can see what's inside. You can see that there's rivets that hold the case of this together. So I'm going to have to drill this shit out. screwdriver pry a little bit yeah those rivets are just hanging on a little bit more than they should oh come on god damn it well this rivet did not want to cooperate so fuck it I'm just gonna break it all see how the breaker looks you know this little orange thing does it's what allows the, uh, the meter to show when that breakers tripped so we can see when we I'm gonna take these little bottom pieces off because those are only important because that's where it hooks to the panel but the inside mechanism is really what's important to look at so when we flip this you see all the parts that move we can turn the breaker back on but as you see in here it's just a spring that is holding all of this stuff everything in here is spring held these parts that go into the panel don't actually touch mechanically uh, they do when the breakers on when that breakers on this piece connects so it sends current all the way through over here into this screw and then when it disconnects it doesn't allow any of that to happen so essentially how a breaker knows how to trip there's no logic to it or anything like that there's just an electromagnet in here so you have a stationary contact you have a moving contact that actually moves back and forth that's spring held um, you got your terminal and you have an electromagnet inside of here so basically when current is flowing through this this electromagnet is magnetically pulling on this movable contact but as long as the currents within 20 amps that magnet doesn't get very strong um, it doesn't have enough force to pull these two contacts away from each other but when a very, very strong current flows through the system, say like 60 amps was to flow through here, 60 amps going through this electromagnet makes this a super strong fucking magnet. So it will literally just pull these contacts away from each other and this thing will move into the trip state. And once it's in a trip state, it locks in that state and the only way to re-engage it is if you, uh, if you pull back off to reset the spring and then push it all the way back forward. This thing, now that I got all this stuff moving, it's like, all coming apart on me but I'll grab one of our breakers that uh, Dustin did not rip apart so when this is in a trip state the only way to reset it is to shut it off all the way to, to off that resets the spring in there and then you push it back to on and it moves that contact uh, the movable contact back to the uh, stationary contact. Two pole breakers are the same thing. It literally just has two of them. Two sets. Um, three pole breakers, same thing. So, now you know the difference between single pole, two pole, three pole breakers, tandem 20 breakers. Um, I'll do some videos coming soon about like what the difference between single phase and three phase is and why you'd even use three pole breakers versus two pole breakers and how in a three phase setup you can still have 
single phase voltage. All right, guys, that's all I got. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave some comments in the, the comment section below or go to the Facebook page, uh, the Electrician U Facebook page, or you can go to www.electricianu and find all of these videos there. Um, gonna have some content coming, some articles as well. I'm gonna try to make the website as the place to be to learn and uh, to find the most content. So I love you guys. I really appreciate you watching and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.